The Texas Penal Code offense of criminal trespass is less serious than burglary, and unlike burglary, doesn't include any sort of intent to commit a felony, theft, or assault. In some sense, it's the act of being someplace that you're not allowed to be. It's important to note the 87th legislature made some significant changes to this statute and many other laws in passing what is known as constitutional carry. For our purposes, we'll divide this statute into first, understanding the concept of notice, next, the set of laws that apply when the basis of the trespass is not related to possessing a firearm, and finally, when the basis of the trespass is indeed related to possessing a firearm. It's also important to note this screencast isn't all-inclusive regarding firearms laws in the state of Texas or constitutional carry. There are several other relevant statutes, including ones that carve out exceptions regarding places such as churches, schools, and amusement parks, so you should not consider this screencast as comprehensive or use it as legal advice on when or where you can carry a firearm in the state of Texas. This screencast is for academic purposes only and designed to explain the contents of Texas Penal Code Section 30.05 and 30.05 only. So first, one of the keys to the statute is the concept of notice. If you've ever been somewhere and somebody unexpectedly comes up to you and says, hey, you're trespassing, your first reaction might be, I didn't know, or there's no sign, or in other words, you didn't have knowledge of the trespass. The knowledge of the trespass is key to the criminal offense. Let's make a distinction here. In our previous example, you might very well be trespassing all right, but it's not criminal yet. What makes trespass criminal in Texas is if you have knowledge of the trespass or it's reasonable that you should have had knowledge of the trespass and are doing it anyway. This knowledge comes through notice. A sign, symbol, fence, or somebody with legal authority telling you you're trespassing. Once you have received this notice, you are essentially culpable for the offense. The Penal Code recognizes many different kinds of notice, not just a sign. According to the Penal Code, notice means a sign or signs, oral or written communication by the owner or someone with authority, such as a peace officer or security guard, fencing or other enclosure obviously designed to keep out intruders or keep in livestock, purple paint placed on trees, posts or property in vertical lines between at least one inch by eight inches and placed at least three to five feet from the ground, and in locations that are visible and no more than 100 feet apart on forested land or 1,000 feet apart on land other than forested land. Or finally, the visible presence of a crop being grown or harvested. Let's move on from notice to criminal trespassing circumstances that don't involve possession of a firearm. The Penal Code states, a person commits criminal trespass when they enter or remain on the property of another including residential land, agricultural land, an RV park, a residential treatment center, or a building or a watercraft or other vehicle without effective consent when they received notice entry was forbidden or they received notice to depart but failed to do so. So keep in mind, while a sign is the most obvious form of notice, the Penal Code considers any of these we just reviewed as notice, including someone in authority, telling you that you're trespassing, a fence, purple paint, or planted crops. As a reminder, there are different sections of this law that apply when the basis of the trespass is the possession of a firearm. We'll discuss those in just a moment. In the meantime, for all of the circumstances we've just discussed, all of the following are A misdemeanors. Criminal trespass in a habitation or shelter center, on a Superfund site, in a critical infrastructure facility or on a college or university while having a previous conviction for trespassing on a college or university campus. A criminal trespass in which a person carries a deadly weapon during the commission of the offense. Note, don't confuse deadly weapon for firearm. All functional firearms are deadly weapons, but not all deadly weapons are firearms. Or the offense is committed on the property of or within a general residential operation operating as a residential treatment center are both A misdemeanors. 
most other criminal trespass offenses are B misdemeanors. We'll talk about a few C misdemeanor exceptions in just a moment. For reference, a shelter center is defined by the Texas Human Resources Code and is a program operated by a public or private nonprofit organization that provides both residential and non-residential services to the victims of family violence. A critical infrastructure facility means locations such as a refinery, power plant, switching station, or water treatment facility as long as they are completely enclosed by a fence or other physical barrier that is obviously designed to keep out intruders. The C misdemeanor criminal trespass offenses include trespass on agricultural land within 100 feet of the boundary or on residential land and within 100 feet of a freshwater boundary. This means if you go into a farmer's field or onto someone's property while tubing in a freshwater river, you are committing C misdemeanor criminal trespass as long as you are 100 feet from the boundary. If you get any farther than that, you would probably be committing a B misdemeanor. There are several defenses to prosecution for criminal trespass and one exception for all of the circumstances and types of notice we've been discussing. Once again, there is a different section of the statute for when the basis of prohibiting entry is possession of a firearm. First, it is a defense to prosecution the actor fell into one of these four categories. A firefighter or EMS acting in lawful discharge of duty under exigent circumstances an employee of a utility company performing a duty within the scope of the agency or for an employee of an agency who reasonably believed they had consent. A handgun license holder and the basis of denial of entry was possession of a handgun. Basically, this language points out there are separate offenses for trespassing by handgun license holders and for an employee or representative of employees exercising a right under the Railway Labor Act. The penal code states a defendant who has been charged with criminal trespass on a college or university campus while having a previous conviction, which you'll recall is an A misdemeanor, may raise the issue during the punishment phase of their trial that he or she was engaging in constitutional free speech or expressive conduct. The penal code states if this is proven by a preponderance of the evidence, the offense shall be punished as a B misdemeanor. So in regards to all of the circumstances we've just discussed, it is a defense to prosecution to criminal trespass the act was part of a peaceful or lawful protest. If this is the case, this issue may be raised at the punishment phase by the defendant and if proven by a preponderance of the evidence, enhanced penalties for shelter centers, Superfund sites, or critical infrastructure facilities will not apply. Finally, it is an exception to prosecution. In other words, this law does not apply to persons when the basis of denial of entry was possession of a handgun and the person was a peace officer or federal law enforcement officer. As we previously alluded to, the 87th legislature made some significant changes to the law through the passage of what is known as constitutional carry. Again, all the previous circumstances and types of notice we just finished discussing are distinct from the type of notice which is required when the basis of the criminal trespass is the possession of a firearm and the person carrying the firearm does not have a license to carry. Before proceeding, we need to make it clear that private property owners may determine whether or not they want persons on their private property with firearms. A person who is in control of private property may prohibit a citizen from entering the private property with a firearm. According to the Penal Code, a person may provide notice that firearms are prohibited on private property by posting a sign at each entrance to the private property that includes language that is identical to or substantially similar to the following. Pursuant to Section 30.05 Penal Code, Criminal Trespass, a person may not enter this property with a firearm. The sign must be in both English and Spanish, in contrasting colors with block letters at least one inch in height, and displayed in a conspicuous manner clearly visible to the public. An offense under this section is a C misdemeanor punishable by a fine not to exceed $200 if the person enters the private property, land, or building with a firearm or other weapon and the sole basis on which entry on the private property land or in the building was forbidden is possession of a firearm or other weapon except that it is an a misdemeanor if it is shown on the trial of the offense that 
After entering the private property, land, or building with the firearm or other weapon, the actor personally received from the owner of the property or another person with apparent authority to act for the owner notice that entry with a firearm or other weapon was forbidden, as given through oral or written communication, or if the actor is unable to reasonably understand the notice described, other personal notice that is reasonable under the circumstances and subsequently failed to depart. It is a defense to prosecution under this section that the basis on which entry on the private property or land or in the building was forbidden is that entry with a handgun was forbidden and the person was carrying a license to carry a handgun issued under subchapter H, chapter 411, government code. In other words, a Texas LTC. And the handgun was in a concealed manner or in a shoulder or belt holster. What this essentially means is that handgun license holders are not subject to the portions of this criminal trespass statute that pertain solely to handguns under Penal Code 30.05. LTC holders are subject to similar requirements, but they are found under Penal Code Sections 30.06 and 30.07. So if a private property owner wants to prohibit all guns, both those carried under constitutional carry and carried under a LTC, the private property owner needs to post additional signs found in Penal Code 30.06 and 30.07. It is a defense to prosecution that the basis for forbidden entry was a landlord-tenant contract prohibiting possessing a firearm or ammunition on or at certain condominiums, apartments, rental homes, or manufactured home lots by the owner or renter of the condominium, apartment, or home, or their guests, as long as the owner, renter, or their guests was going directly to or from their vehicle and their residence with a firearm or ammunition or was storing the firearm or ammunition in their vehicle or residence. Similarly, it is also a defense to prosecution the conduct occurred on hotel property and the basis on which entry was forbidden was a firearm or firearm ammunition and the actor was a guest of a hotel, motel, inn, or similar business and the actor carried or stored a firearm or ammunition in the actor's hotel room carried a firearm or ammunition directly en route to or from the hotel or the actor's hotel room, carried a firearm or ammunition directly en route to or from the actor's vehicle located on the hotel property, including a vehicle in a parking area provided for hotel guests, or carried or stored a firearm or firearm ammunition in the actor's vehicle located on the hotel property, including a vehicle in a parking area provided for hotel guests.